Hello, my name is Nigel. I'm sitting here on the banks of Loch Lomond in Scotland to tell you about my new book, which uh, you may be able to see is entitled A Visitor's Guide to Scotland, and it's just been released now, August 2019. Now, the background to this book is that for some 13 years, I was a travel agent, tour operator, and tour guide, arranging tours all around Scotland for groups of all sizes. Since retirement last year, I've sat down, consolidated all my knowledge, information and some 1,250 photographs and, and condensed in a single publication which extends to 800 pages. Now, the book has a wide range of sections and topics. For example, we have sections on activities such as boating, as you see here architecture, arts and crafts, castles. Scotland has over 700 castles. Driving tours, I've got quite a number of specimen itineraries for you. Events and culture. I've got family history. Many people come to Scotland to trace their history. Famous persons, filming locations, gardens, geology. This is where the science of geology started in Scotland in the 18th century. We have uh, a, a vast section on particular places, villages, towns, cities. We have islands, nature um, with wildlife. Um, we have other sections including um, Scottish borders region, Scottish food, I've even included some recipes for you, steam trains including the famous uh, Jacobite Express sometimes known as the Harry Potter train and whisky distilleries. Uh, Scotland has over a hundred whisky distilleries. Whisky production is Scotland's um, principal export. So that's just some of the uh, I, just uh, some of the contents in this publication. Now, why I'm sitting here on Loch Lomond is because this spot is a microcosm of Scotland in general. Behind me, we have Ben Lomond, which is just having the sun catching the top of it. On the opposite side of the loch is a a section of hiking trail called the West Highland Way. This runs from Glasgow to Fort William in the north. The whole trail takes approximately seven days to cover. Through the centre of the loch is the Highland Boundary Fault, which separates the Highlands and the Lowlands. So on the opposite side of the loch is the Highlands, on my side to the south is the Lowlands. Lus itself is a very popular village. visitors a year. It has a famous and very popular church which attracts many weddings. In the burial ground is a hogback burial from the Viking era. Not far away is the site of a famous battle between Clan Colquhoun, who are based here, and a rival clan, Clan MacGregor, um, whose famous chieftain was Rob Roy MacGregor. Now Luss is a good example of a base for a hub and spoke tour. You could base yourself here and you could go to Edinburgh and back within a day, Glasgow and back within a day, Stirling Castle and back within a day, Loch Ness and back within a day, Inverary and back within a day. There are many other places around Scotland with this characteristic. Dunkeld and Pitlochry in central Scotland come to mind. Further north, Fort William, which gives you access to Isle of Skye and the Jacobite Express. Further north than that, further up along Loch Ness, is Inverness, capital of the Highlands, an ideal base for touring the northern section of Scotland, perhaps linking you in with the uh, North Coast 500 trail. So there we are, that's just a synopsis of the book and why I'm sitting here. So just to recap, it's called A Visitor's Guide to Scotland and it's out now. I hope it'll be of great interest to you. Thank you.